been involved in an organization like that or you know anything of that sort, you've probably already made your decision about you know what has tugged at your conscience, what you're going to be involved in, and now you're you're hoping for it to grow, and you, you have to have to expect that it will. Um, so there are there's the work of all these organizations that have been that have been in there for the long haul, uh, doing the grinding, difficult work uh, in the years when you're just in the in the church basement or or here, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, that uh, that is ongoing. And and what else? Uh, and now we're just in the middle of this surgence that is tremendous. I mean, uh, uh, an, out an outfit like indivisibility doesn't even exist two weeks ago, and now it's something gargantuan uh, all over the country. So I think all of us, too, have to be discerned and make decisions about which of these sizable wellsprings that are now all around us, you know, we will make uh, decisions as to where we will invest our time and energy, what, what we've got left. I mean, just the work, for example, of there is a there is a battle going on right now for the soul of the Democratic Party, and it is going to have a sizable ripple effect as to which one wins. I mean, there is going to be a winner and a loser uh, as to which which side of the battle that is now going on right now for just what kind of a party the Democratic Party is going to be. For some of us here, we're going to want to be involved in that work. We just can't really imagine being political without that being one of the things uh, that we're doing. And for others of us here, no way, right? That's just too compromising and whatever. That just doesn't cut close enough to who we are. Um, but we're all, all going to have choices of that sort more than ever um, in the days ahead. If you have one, another question, please come to the mic. Take a minute. We have another minute or two before we uh, have to wrap this up. I'll take the cue from Gary. Um, I'll tell you, as we're doing this too, there are, we've just, they've just come in. There are copies of the film available. My lovely wife is out in the hall. If you'd like to get a copy for friend and family, I'm sure that Cornell West will stop for a minute to sign it before he runs off to see Sean. Take one to Sean Hannity. That's what you should do. Bring, bring a copy of Reinhold Niebuhr to Sean Hannity. Uh, good evening to the panelists. Um, shout out to Dr. West. I'm a, I'm a graduate of St. Mark's School of Texas, and you would visit our school every year. Yes, sir. And so um, those, that, those lectures were the inception to my critical thinking skills, I'd say. And so thank you for that. Uh, my question, uh, even though I was born and raised in Dallas, uh, I'm, I just flew up from Baltimore with my partner this afternoon for this lecture. It's in Baltimore that I, I I went to Johns Hopkins, and I was there when the city uh, devolved um, several years ago as a result of the, the slaying, the slaughtering of Freddie Gray. And um, as someone who I, I, think, I, I think myself to be well-read and a study, student of, of history and that kind of thing, my question is, don't we, um, Dr. Cohn would say, you know, those, those servants of the God of the oppressed, don't we have a responsibility um, to save our brothers and sisters? It's not a matter of, say, xenophobia, homophobia, um, you know, racism, that kind of thing anymore. It's really, it's, it's really kind, of, kind of two different sides. And so um, you mentioned the, the naivete of God's redemptive power. And I use, I'm a minister in church as well, so um, God's redemptive power. But say like a Donald Trump, where Donald Trump is nothing but an expression of the continuum of the American experience without spirituality. What does one do when even it seems, you know, I keep hearing the, these, these notions that this is unprecedented and we've never seen this before and this is unconstitutional. The Constitution, that's the law. So if, if these things are being eroded and there's protests as far as Tokyo and Antarctica of all places, you know, where does the buck stop? Don't we as, 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 as a people have a responsibility to our counterparts, to our children to, to thwart the notion of, of global warming and, and racism and, and try and 
uh, affect change for the positive in our, in our world. And to and question one, one more thing, but to do so, how to, how to do so, because um, Toussaint Louverture, you know, January 1, 1804, accomplished his goal, which was to free Haiti from, from the rule of the French. But he did so in a, in a, a very, very violent manner. And so, in the event that, that his outcome was still, he still got what he was looking for, what he was seeking. You know, we've seen not the nonviolent era of the civil rights movement. King was assassinated in a suit and tie, being the, the essence of class and dignity. How do we, us millennials, us quote unquote freedom fighters, operate in this new paradigm? Yeah, that's, that's a whole lot there, brother. You got a lot on the table. So good to see you, though. And people should know that St. Phillips was one of the grand centers of education on the chocolate side of Dallas. And it's there with young students, including Erica Badu's children. Yes. I can see that little brother playing the cello right now. Uh, 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 there and Reverend Flowers has been there with his wife as a leader for many, many, many years. And it's a magnificent thing to see the products like yourself and others around the country coming out of Dallas in that way. I think we have to remind fellow citizens that for the first 75 years of the history of the U.S. Constitution, it was a pro-slavery document in practice. So that all this talk about somehow we got a constitutional crisis or something's immoral or we got some, no, America has a whole history that's drenched in criminality as well as heroic morality. So it's nothing new, especially for people that look at the country through the lens that Professor Cohn has been talking about for over 40 some years. Now that doesn't mean it, it, something isn't unprecedented in terms of being new and novel, but it's not as if, lo and behold, business as usual, things were fine and all of a sudden here comes Donald Trump and people have a rude awakening and say, oh my God, we really got a crisis, the Constitution's in trouble, rights to liberty. No, you had war crimes today in Yemen. You had seven children killed in Yemen today. Now we had two Americans too, so people are obsessed with those Americans, but those Yemen lives have the same value as the American lives. That's continuity. Continuity with the Bush administration, continuity with the Obama administration. Keeping track of those things is part and parcel of what it means to build on the best of Niebuhr, responding to Coles, responding to the feminists and womanist the, the, theologians, responding to our gay brothers and lesbians, responding to indigenous people, responding to working peoples and all human beings who want to be persons of moral consistency and integrity. The beautiful thing at the moment in the history of this empire is that if the only people who could vote well, those under 30, Bernie Sanders would be in the White House. That's a very important development. That was not the case in the 80s when we were here with the Reaganite sensibilities and the soul craft of right-wing ideology trying to convince persons to be human is just be obsessed with money, 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 status, status, status. Something is happening in the spirit and mind and heart and body and intellect of the younger generation. It's a beautiful thing. Their challenge is they have been disconnected from the best of the traditions so that they oftentimes are caught within the market operation too, even given their leftist analysis. So when it comes to issues of integrity, honesty, and decency, they still have major challenges because all they know is just getting over by any means. Now part of that has to do with the fact that there's been an abysmal failure of the left in the last 50 years, partly because of lack of imagination, but also partly because of repression. If America has told people to be leftists, is to get killed, character assassination, incarceration, or wholesale marginalization. That's why our young people are hungry for a tradition, but it's hard for them to gain access to it. Because so many of the folk have been crushed. Repression is real in the United States in the last 50 years, and Trump is bringing that back, and now it affects more and more of the mainstream. He said, oh my God, these rights and liberties have been suspended. Who do you think Paul Robeson was? Who do you think Walter Bernstein was? Who do you, you know, these folk were repressed. That's part of American history. We don't like to talk about it, you see. 
And the young folks say, well, is that what it means to be a progressive, to, to have to undergo that? Well, let's try to change that. But you have to have spirit. You got to have your spirit intact like Martin and Fannie Lou and Ella Baker and the others. That's what we were talking about in Dallas. That's what we need, and of course, not just for black youth, but youth across the board. But the beautiful thing is the awakening is real among the younger generation. They just got to get their spirits intact. I'm getting the cue from Gary. I think we're going to wind this up now. Can we have a hand for everybody here on the panel? Great folks. Um, there are copies of the film outside. If, if, if you, uh, if you want to learn a little bit about where we'll be in showing the film and some background about the film, our website is simple. It's journeyfilms.com. We look, we look forward to engaging with you. Thank you again for being here this evening.